Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Brittany. I do usually like lifestyle turning into baby videos as you can tell by the title. If you're here, you're probably one, either having a C-section or just trying to get info just in case you do have a C-section because this is my positive C-section story, hospital stay. What do you want to call it? Mean, journey is not the word for it. A uh, positive C-section story. <laughs> That's the title, I guess. Uh, yeah, so we found out at, I'll quickly go through like the briefs part of it, but we found out at 30 weeks that he was a breech boy and I was a breech baby. I'm like, this is just karma, right? And my doctor, and obviously listen to your doctor, but safest route for mom and baby was always my like, birth plan, just have him the safest possible way. And for breech babies, typically you're gonna do a C-section. So I knew at 30 weeks it was possible, but she's like, listen, he's breached now. Most likely he will not be breached by the time you deliver. So the plan, I say plan, was always to have him uh, vaginally, medicated probably, <laughs> but that obviously did not happen because we're here now. He is five months old and he is such a happy, healthy little baby. And honestly, like I wouldn't have done it any other way unless of course he was turned the right way and then he would have been a vaginal baby. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go into quickly. I will try just breeze through it because I did this video when he was two weeks old and I'm not kidding you, I looked like a zombie. I played that, like I was starting to edit it. I was like, I cannot put this online because I'm not kidding you. I just stood at the camera, very monotoned and so sleep deprived. <laughs> I was, you know what, that would have been a good like real life <laughs> two week old baby update for you guys. But we're at five months, we're going through the sleep regression. So I am very tired. If I look tired, I'm tired. And guess what? Yesterday, mama started her period, which, that's not what this is about. If you want to see fourth trimester or just like random vlogs, please let me know in the comments what you want to see. I'm even wanting to do like favorite baby products or the ones I regret because there are some. I need to grab my phone because I have all my notes on it. He is napping next to me right now. Uh, not a good napper, so I'm assuming he will wake up. And at that point, I'm going to just feed him. And then he'll probably be with me because he just likes being held. Okay, so I had my C-section. It was scheduled for May 16th, and that is the day I had him. At 8 a.m. is when it was scheduled for, so they said be at the hospital by 6. Did that. My doctor actually got called into um, an emergency. Uh, I think it was another C-section in another hospital, so I did end up waiting. I think like maybe one or two hours, but I was so like nervous. It just felt like 10 minutes, and she was already there. <laughs> So yeah, we had the baby. I think he came out at nine something a.m. And I didn't have a name picked out for him yet. And my fiance was getting very upset with me because I just couldn't, I was like, I need to see him. His name's Asher, it's an adorable name. We call him Ash. They basically hook you up to stuff when you get there. Um, had him like hooked up and they had me hooked up and just monitor us, monitored us. I was having contractions. I didn't know I was having them, but the nurse was like, you're having them because I can see it on the screen. My back was hurting really bad that week. So I think it was probably just like back contractions. Um, and they take, I met the anesthesiologist. He was great. He was the one that was actually talked to me the most through it. Obviously my doctor, so my doctor, my OBGYN is the one that actually delivered him, which I think was cool because I know not everyone gets that and I trust her and I loved her and I wish she were still my OBGYN. Uh, but we live in a whole nother state now, but that's another story. So yeah, 39 weeks and two days is when I gave birth to him. Um, they put us back into the O operating room, OR, yeah, operating room. <laughs> and um, the anesthesiologist uh, did one, uh, the spinal, he, t he had gave me two options, so like a spinal tap or something else. And I was like, go with whatever one's the safest. So I don't really remember exactly which one, Whatever one he recommended is the one I went with. Um, but a bit big needle went into my back, uh, it pinched. Yeah, when the medicine went in, it kind of like burned a little, but other than that, 
probably within like 30 seconds, I couldn't feel anything. So you're numb from, not from the neck down, from the, um, basically like your boobs down is what I would say. I could really only move my arms and my head. It did make me jittery. I was shaking a lot and he was like, um, if you start feeling nauseous, let me know. And probably two minutes after that, I started feeling nauseous and I was like, I looked up at him and I was like, I think I'm gonna get sick. He was like, I could already tell you were getting sick. So I already injected you with the meds. Um, and it went away almost immediately. So before I even knew they were cutting into me, uh, he was out. <laughs> That's how quick it is. I, I didn't, it didn't feel it, obviously. You could feel kind of like movement, but I, I didn't know they were actually cutting when they were. So it was my doctor and another doctor. And they brought Asher up to me probably, I want to say like 10 seconds is all I got to see him for. And then him and Randall left the room. And like, I was just, it felt like forever sitting there where they like put me back together. <laughs> By the time Randall and Baby got back and I was all stitched back up, I think it was only like 40 minutes technically. It felt like forever. Um, they ruled us into our recovery room. They gave me baby, so I was holding him. I was so scared during that rolling part because I'm like, I can't even like move. What if I drop him? All these fears. I think this is normal. You have so many fears when baby comes and you finally have them. It's like they were so protected in your belly and all of a sudden like you have to, not that I wasn't doing work when he was in there. My body was doing the work for me. But now like I had to be the one physically keeping him safe and that was terrifying. So I did skin to skin contact immediately and he nursed for 45 minutes. I think that's supposed to be the longest nursing like you have with babies like right after it at least was ours, the longest nursing we had. It was really nice. He doesn't like cuddling with me anymore, so it's really sad. So I miss like the newborn days, especially in the house where he just like would fall asleep on me. He does not do that. If any of this is scattered, it's because my notes are scattered. Why did I not do this in order of everything? It sort of makes sense. They told me I would start being able to walk in three hours. Let me just tell you that is not the case. I was able to walk 4 a.m. So from 9 a.m. until 4 a.m., obviously, like the next day, I could not walk. <laughs> so just to give you an idea. Now, everyone can walk. They, were, they say maybe they just gave you a lot of medicine. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, I did have a catheter also. They do that when you're numb. So you, like... I could feel they were doing it down there like because it like you can feel movement you just can't feel it going in obviously so like um I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or popular opinion but I loved having the catheter in because one I couldn't walk but two like I I could just I didn't know I was peeing but like I never felt like I had to pee and I'm someone that needs to pee a ton especially when you're pregnant for nine months and I'm constantly going pee it was nice not having to go pee for a while uh, and when it came out they took it out that same like I think it was a little bit after I walked so I walked at 4 a.m. I think they took my cath out at 6 a.m. Um, before the next shift changed the nurse wanted to get it out so uh, and I expected that to be painful and it was not she was like, honestly, um, a lot of patients feel like if they cough while I'm taking it out, it's easier. So I coughed, took it out, didn't hurt at all. It just felt weird coming out. You just feel like something was coming out of you. <laughs> okay, so my milk, uh, you have colostrum the first couple days. I don't know for sure. I did research on it. If like there's, I think there's a little bit of a difference from C-section versus going into like labor naturally and that your milk sometimes will be delayed coming in and mine definitely was so it took my body i think so i gave birth on monday it wasn't until saturday that it started coming in uh so he was hungry a hungry boy obviously so by day my plan was always just to breastfeed and not use formula um but the thing i'm gonna tell you guys is and what i had to tell myself is that yes you can have like stuff Planned, like this is what you want but at the end of the day uh, it's what is best for baby and um, secondary mom <laughs> and that's what you need to do so I think it was day three the P 
pediatrician, I think it was Wednesday, that they were just like, hey, you're not producing milk yet and baby has lost more than 10% of his body weight. So anything within that 10% is normal. It's like he's now below that and it's time to supplement formula in. I remember crying when they told me this, like the nurse told me that and I walked out and just, I just started bawling. Um, and it, I like looking back, I'm like that's so dumb, but also like, you know how many hormones were going through my body and how like, just like in general, like it's a very, I was sleep deprived. I was hallucinating. I had not slept that much. So yeah, anything that like I perceived as me or my body doing something wrong, I took like extra hard. <laughs> so we did use formula. We actually, um, well, if you want like a fourth trimester uh, video, let me know in the comments and I will make one because I don't want to make this video that part. But yeah, we did start formula in the hospital. I did still breastfeed like nonstop though. Um, and I'm still breastfeeding. And if you notice the pimples on my face, I started my period yesterday, his six month, no, five month birthday yesterday. Uh, and I didn't know that was supposed to happen when you're breastfeeding. So we're gonna hopefully, I don't know how that's gonna affect me. Hopefully it doesn't affect me at all. I just was not expecting it. Um, the nursery did give him a bink, which I found interesting. I thought that they wouldn't do that. Um, but they did, and he still uses one. <laughs> Not that that was, a, like, a big thing, but, like, I wasn't going to give him one. I love it, though, now. So if we have a second one, will I give him a bink? Probably. <laughs> I quickly wanted to mention, we use the lactation consultants a ton at the hospital, and I forgot to mention that. So if your hospital, which I think most, if not all of them, have them, use your lactation consultant to help you figure out what is best for like you and baby and um just to just help you out because it was frustrating it was very frustrating especially when your milk wasn't coming in um my milk wasn't coming in that i just wanted to make sure i was doing everything i could to try to successfully feed him so we use them a lot um use them that's all i have to say <laughs> i was not in pain until the next day so i'll go into i think that covers like everything first day uh, you're just like on a lot of pain meds and, like it's still coming out of you from like the or room i'm not gonna lie to you and like i don't know how much of a pain tolerance i have but it was painful <laughs> anything where like obviously like you had a major surgery your core was cut open uh, i could not like lift myself up and down for a long time it just felt like you were cut through your abdomen and you weren't. <laughs> Let me go into my notes for that. Um, I did Tylenol and Ibuprofen. Uh, I think it was like, I forget how long, every like three to six hours or something. So like I rotated them. Um, I never did any Vicodin, which they offered. And I just like... I want to remember having that from another surgery in my past. I remember feeling sick on it. I was like, I'm just going to do what I can without doing um, hardcore drugs. And I've had a lot of like friends that had parents get hooked to it. I don't know. There's just this fear there of like doing anything that's like considered a, uh, my mind went blank. What do you call that? Whatever, uh, hard drug, whatever. So yes, I did all the Tylenol and ibuprofen. Really anything after like well, getting up hurts. Um, Randall would like lift me up and then like hug me for a while uh, because I would like be wincing in pain. And then walking hurts a lot. I think I had a little bit of nerve damage on my left hand side um, because it felt like it was on fire for one, two, like three weeks straight. And then I would get like severe like pain in it. Uh, I think there's just a little bit of nerve damage there so anything more than a few minutes standing i just like would be crouched over in pain just on that side they give this stuff to regular births i say regular is that offensive i don't know vagina births as well um this is an ice pack and your room is like filled you have a stock of them and they'll bring you more if you want them this is an ipad ice pack that lasts maybe only 10 minutes um because you just shake it and then 
it gets cold and then it's a one time use and done. So I used that a few times. I would just lay it on my belly. And then a nurse came in and she was like, I feel like you would much prefer this guy here. And this has a little blood on it. So, uh, and this is my favorite one. So she would go and fill this with ice and bring it back to me. And she would just as often as I wanted it. And um, it's reusable. So if I wanted to use it now, I could, but this, the ice lasted so much longer. So I would highly recommend this over this, but I want to tell you there are both options there. I don't remember getting hungry once during the hospital stay, um, but just knowing I needed to eat, so I did eat when I was supposed to. I loved the hospital food, it was delicious, and I loved that I could just like, pick up the phone and order and it'd be there within like 10 minutes. I didn't have to do anything. Not that I would have done anything because by day two, there is pain. There is a lot of pain. You're because you can't get up and down, you can't pick anything up. When Randall would go home, so he would go home um, every day to take a shower, cuddle the cats and feed them. And when he would leave, I would be so scared because I'm like, baby's gonna start crying he's in his bassinet next to me but i can't like i can't do that i can't physically get him um and i would sometimes get him and it would be so painful and literally just like call the nurse like i never did that i was like i don't want to bother them um just call the nurse use them you're paying for your hospital stay and like they're there to help you and they probably don't mind doing that um especially when i my stay there like they're it was just me and three other babies on the floor at that time until the last day, those poor nurses. I didn't want to use them at all the last day. I'm like, there's 11 babies on this floor and they're understaffed. <laughs> so, um, and like the first like three days, the floor was so quiet and no one was there that like they would have been so perfectly fine helping me. <laughs> I just did not want to ask that. I felt like a nuisance and that was a personal problem. Um, I did get a nurse's basket though. Side note, nurse's baskets are really adorable and cute. I just filled it with like snacks, scrunchies, um, drinks, and I feel like there was something else in there, whatever. Um, but yeah, I did that. They were like too nice to take any of it though. So the very last day, because like I only had two nurses ever even take any of it. I asked the nurse that was like discharging us, like, can you put this like in the um, break room, like the nurse's break room? That way, like you guys actually use it because <laughs> I didn't want to take it home. So I mentioned Randall would go home for like a few hours every day. Those few hours, I was scared to death because I was just nervous about everything and like having to do because I couldn't get up on my own. Uh, I used the nursery every time he left, maybe like for about an hour, um, just so I could get sleep. And I say that very, uh, almost sarcastically because you do not get sleep. No matter what, uh, you're having people come in like every 30 minutes, whether it's a nurse for you, a nurse for your baby, uh, the pediatrician, your doctor. There's just so many people that come in that like you just don't get sleep. But, oh, hey, Max. Uh, I, <laughs> oh, you're fine. I did uh, use them a lot and a lot of people don't use them because we did uh, where he stayed in the room the whole time, but I did have them. I just wanted to put it in here. I did have them take them for like an hour a day ish. The stay itself, like the accommodations, <laughs> I, I don't, it was 80 degrees out that week and our room did not have air conditioning. And this is the only thing that bothers me about it because everyone was nice and the food was awesome and obviously we were healthy and everything was good, but we didn't have air conditioning for three of the four like full days we were there. And that's because everyone knew we didn't have air conditioning but no one decided or even said like we could put a work order in for them to fix it. And do you know this sweet angel of, a, um, she was a nurse's aide. She was like on day three, why are you still not with air conditioning? I was like, I don't know. 
She's like, it is like miserable for us to come in here and you're like staying in here. She's like, I'm gonna put a work in order in real quick. And literally within like 10 minutes, someone came up. All they had to do was open up that um, AC vent, uh, do a switch and it turned on. So like the fact that it was that simple to fix made me a little mad because no one bothered to fix it. They just let us stay there. And I'm also mad at myself because like I didn't bother asking to switch rooms even though I really wanted to change rooms. And I didn't, so that's on me. That's, you know, a lot of that is on me. So this was the hospital bed that I was in the entire time. This is the shower. It was very clean, tiny, but efficient. This was the bassinet that rolled around and what I used for walks. <laughs> and then this is everything that they give you. So they supplied us with all the diapers and wipes and swaddles that you could ever ask for. Uh, which I guess we'll go into my next point of what did I actually use for my bag while I was there like my um, What I brought with me into the hospital bag and that is simple. I just my toiletries face wash hair wash and this Incredible fan this fan I got it's one of those things you can hook up to it's technically for Asher for like when we go on walks um, I had this with us because I had seen it just in one video of a girl being like, this was really nice to have a fan in our room. Um, this saved me. Poor Randall didn't because this was on Baby and I. Well, really just me because Baby was fine being warm. He's, he was used to being warm in my belly. Um, but yeah, I actually haven't charged this since being at the hospital and it still turns on. And that was five months ago. So the battery lasts a long time on this sucker. And you just charge it with um, a USB cord but yeah that's all I used I wore their hospital gowns I didn't wear a bra my milk wasn't in I had bras I just didn't need to use it um, and then I used their undies which I do have I brought it from the hospital um, new ones not <laughs> I brought the used ones uh, because you bleed yes even if you have a c-section I know a lot of you are like this is common sense of course you bleed even when you have a c-section you are going to bleed because your body is well your uterus is shrinking and your body is uh you know shedding all of that so uh these are the they look these are undies <laughs> these are the undies they are mesh undies they are huge uh if we ever have another one i'll probably just bring my own underwear so there's two leg holes and then it's really stretchy so it does go up more and I know right now it just looks like a bandeau um, but yeah this is actually underwear <laughs> and then because that's just mesh you have this which is your pad so this humongous thing is your pad and you stick that in there and you feel like you're wearing a saggy diaper now everyone is different i think in how they bleed i did not heavy bleed at all like ever i could have worn just my normal pads and undies and been fine first day probably not first day they put a puppy well every day they put a puppy pad under me and i leaked through um this and onto the pad so the first day i probably would want to wear this every day after that um i did not bleed enough it honestly looked like after the first day um like jelly was coming out of me for like eight weeks straight or six weeks straight. I don't remember exactly how long. So um, I would have been fine wearing regular undies and that, but you have the stitches on you um, and you want something to go way above that because you don't want any pressure on that. So maybe I would actually use the mesh undies if I did it again. Um, yeah, just a tidbit there. Be prepared to bleed. And then um, this, also, I had, I forget what you call this, but um, it's so you can squirt water into your hoo-ha. I didn't need it because my vagina didn't hurt. If you want to use it because you feel like you're bleeding so much and you want to just like clean it out that first night, go ahead and use it, but um, I did not. Why is there still water in it though, is my question. This has been five months since I've used it and I didn't even use it. I do think actually a nurse squirted me with water, my vagina with water that first night because I couldn't do anything on my own. I couldn't even walk on my own. Um, or was that? No, that was at 4 a.m. 
when my legs started working and we went on a walk, we went to the bathroom, that was it. How is that possible though? Because I had a cat then. She was changing my pad. No, that's not right. That's not right. This was, no, this was right after, right after I got my cat out. That was it. Cause I was a little scared about if it would hurt down there. Um, no, yeah, so it's been a while. Obviously that water is still in there. I'm pretty sure I took photos of my hospital room and all of this stuff in it. So I will have that as B-roll if I do have it still. I'm a fan of the toiletries. I use baby's going home outfit. I use my going home outfit was my going there outfit. And nipple butter, huge. Your nips are gonna be like they are gonna fall off. They hurt so bad. Honestly, use nipple butter like a week up to it just to get them nice and like moisturized. Uh, I will link down below what I use and I love it and it's um, food grade so you don't have to like wipe it off. Chapstick, my phone, and lastly slippers. Especially if you're having a C-section, you're gonna be needing to go on walks every day. And that's to help like get your body to pass gas and go poop. Um, and I brought some and I wore them but my feet were so swollen while I was there and they barely fit into slippers. So bring stretchy ones is my advice or like a size up or ones that don't because like mine had the cover over it. Maybe get like the thong type um, slipper because my fat feet would not fit into them. But they're like to me they were necessary. Uh, but speaking of swelling, they do have these like little machines you can machines like little things you put around your calves that um, inflate and deflate. They help help with the swelling, and I used those I think for two days on my legs, and they weren't helping, and my feet were swelling no matter what. So I think day three I was like I'm done with this. And the other thing I, what I didn't have in my bag and what I would have wanted is like a cute blanket or like items for him because I wasn't even thinking, a photographer came in while we were there. We didn't know when she was coming. We didn't even know she was coming, but she came in and we didn't have anything um, cutesy for photos. I don't know. I expected kind of them to have it, but I guess like uh, probably not because of COVID and I don't know. Um, but we didn't have a cute swaddle or anything to do photos. So like when she took the photos, he was just in his hospital stuff. Um, and we didn't hire a newborn photographer, which I, is like a regret. Like I probably would do that for my second one if we have one. Um, but yeah, do something cutesy so that when a photographer comes, you can do it. And even for yourself, because uh, yeah, I we didn't know she was coming. She just showed up and I looked like hell. <laughs> I had a scrunchie, my hair was disgusting, my whole like, I was sweaty because we didn't have air conditioning still and she was like, get a family photo and I was like, no, I can't, one, I can't like really move um, and two, no, no one needs to see this. <laughs> I should have just taken the photo, I just, I was in my hospital robe, my boobs were out, I was literally eating, my lunch had just gotten there when she came in. I. I just wanted to eat my food in peace and have him be in the photos and that was it. <laughs> body wise, I was nervous uh, that first time looking at my body after having him. I don't know why, it just made me nervous. I'm like, what am I gonna see? Cause I was like, my, is my skin gonna sag? Oh, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and honestly, I was, I was more pleased with how it looked than I expected. I don't know why I expected to see something disgusting to me in the mirror, but I just saw a body and that's what it is. It definitely looked fluffier than normal, but it looked way skinnier than it had the last like three months from being in third trimester where I grew the most. <laughs> so I was not like, not that you, and no one should be upset looking at the body. One, they just pushed pushed or like had a human cut out of them in my case. Um, and your body does so much. I'm very proud of it. It does not look the same still, uh, but it did a lot and it was good to me. Let's see, what am I missing here? I think I have a photo of it too. Day one or technically day two after birth because day one I was not up on my own yet. So I'll insert that if I feel, um, I think I even have my undies in it, mm. the mesh ones. I have a little bit of like 
an obsessive personality when it comes to cleanliness and I showered day two and I needed it desperately especially with the AC not working so I showered every day while I was there except for day one my stitches were great the whole time I didn't have any issues with them I was nervous that I was gonna have some healing issues because if any of you have been like with my videos for a while I don't heal well um, my body just does not like it's really slow to do it and I've had uh, years of like wound issues so I was a little like a little is not the right word um, highly anxious about how that was gonna handle and my doctor knew like I had issues especially with like um, even like keloid scarring so she did my stitches a different way than she normally does uh, but it obviously worked because I didn't have any problems and I think they look amazing. It's a little crooked. <laughs> just, just know your scar's not gonna be perfect. <laughs> it is a little crooked. Um, and I think that it looks better than I, I know it looks better than I expected. And it's really, Randall's the only person that will ever see it. It's that far down. It's where like TMI here, your pubes like go a little bit above, my pubes go a little bit above it. Oh, let me just say, um, I asked my doctor, do I need a shave before I come in? Like that's a question I had and she said, she said no. And I went into the hospital and like I hadn't shaved. One, I couldn't even see my hoo-ha. So no, I didn't shave it. And um, so I got there and then I was just like, when she was getting me ready and she had us hooked up, she was like, do you need us to shave you? And I was like, like I had that like, what the heck moment. I was like, no, maybe. So she takes a look down there and she's like, I'll be back. And she comes back with sh shaving stuff and shaves me. I was embarrassed. Randall was cracking up because he was obviously with, with me in the doctor's office when I asked if I needed to shave too. And he knew what was going down there because he can obviously see me. <sighs> Randall was necessary, a huge necessity for me. If he weren't there, I would have been so lost. So even if it's not like your partner, if your partner can't be there, they can't stay the full time, have someone there. Obviously we lived like 24 hour drive away from all of our family and friends. So like I had to, like he had, he took work off for me, obviously. Uh, my mom was there for the very first day. So she, when I gave birth was there and then um, went home to our house that night and then left like really early in the morning to fly home back to Ohio. Um, but yeah, I could not have done it without him. Or I would have been a nuisance on the nurses like nonstop. I should stop saying nuisance. Like you're not, you're not a nuisance. I just felt like I was one. It was impossible to sleep. I don't think I slept much like at all while we were there. So like by day four, like I was hallucinating because I had not slept. So yeah, that's not safe. By day four, which was Thursday, um, I was begging my doctor to let us go home because baby was healthy, I'm healthy. I didn't want to be there anymore. And she was like, are you sure? Because you can absolutely and should, if you feel up to it, stay until Friday. Uh, they wanted me to be Monday through Friday. And I was like, no, I really wanna go home. And she let me. And it wasn't like, um, it wasn't bad for me to go home. It was just like, in her mind and what she told me, she's like, I get it. Like, if you are uncomfortable here, go home, be comfortable at home. But if you feel like you want to use like all the resources we have for one more day before you go home, then say another day. And I was like, please just let us go home. And the pediatrician was fine with that too. I think that's everything. All of this is scattered, at least the way I'm filming it right now. So if I can somehow get it condensed into like an order of for something i'm i will try my best to make this as orderly as possible for you um if you have any questions feel free to leave in the comments down below i will answer them for you overall it's a very like easy basic stay we didn't have any complications so yeah i don't know what we will do for like i keep saying if we if, I don't even know if we're gonna have a second one um, someday, but if we have a second one someday, I will um, 
definitely know what to do going in if we have a c-section um but i haven't i don't need to decide it until later if i want to try for a v-back or another c-section that's the decision i can make in the future but at this point i know what to expect and it would go much easier mentally <laughs> and i am fully healed like week three was magic for me and now we're on week i think what 22 ish so it's been a while it's been a journey but if you're like having a c-section you're getting prepared for one um i'd say it's a lot less scary than it actually is now this is an experience from someone that had a scheduled c-section it's different from scheduled versus emergency c-section so i can't even talk on that and um i feel blessed that i don't have to so i think that's all i'll insert um asher because somehow he napped the entire video i don't know how I probably need to get him up to eat though because my boob is feeling full and I will see you guys soon. Let me know in the comments if you want another video of like a baby products regret or best purchases or fourth trimester. What do you want to see next? And I will do it and I love you and goodbye.